Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 3 of Stranger Things. Before I get into this, I will start off with a little bit of a non-spoiler review. So to just basically just give you my overall thoughts about Season 3, I really like it. I think it is great. If you have not seen Season 3 yet, do it. It's really worth the time. I kind of at this point, I can, you know, I mean, I'm just fresh off the season, so I'm thinking this might etch it out as being my favorite season. I am someone who's really liked every season. I like, I hear people from here, like, I don't know how generally most people felt, but I hear from people here, from there, here and there, that they were kind of, they liked season two, but obviously not nearly as much as season one, which I really liked season two, even more so, like, because I subsequently rewatched it in preparation for season three. But I think season three beats it and etches it out and beats season one because this season was so good with just the scale and everything with the character development the story just like so much what's fantastic about this season that like it's so well worth your time I'm not trying to overhype it or anything if you haven't seen it so you know like obviously like i said that's going to be the end of my like non-spoiler reviews it's highly worth it so and it's just great so we'll just leave it at that obviously going forward i'm going to be going into spoilers so if you have not seen all of stranger things season three do not listen any further because you will get stuff spoiled for you you have been warned. Okay, there is so much to dive into about this season. Okay, so let's break a few things down. I was going into this season believing that the one that was kind of like being left behind, to a certain extent, I guess you can make the argument it was Dustin, but more so it was Will. The storyline I thought that was going to be Dustin's of like, oh, like everyone's kind of getting older and moving on with that, that was Will because everyone else ended up having a girlfriend. Dustin ends up having one. Obviously, a lot of people think his is made up, but then lo and behold, it turns out, oh no, she's not actually made up because she pops up literally in the last episode it's like yes because I'm, I'm skipping around here but that last that thing with Susie I was so certain it's like oh the person or content I was like oh it's got to be like uh, their teacher Mr. Clark I was thinking that but it's like nope ended up going down that route so I was like that's a better route to go down anyway but still it was just fascinating to me so but the fact is that Will would have to struggle with that because I love it because like they're older now they're kind of teenagers and it's like all they want to do like you know in Lucas and Mike's case all they want to do is hang out with their girlfriends you know Eleven and uh, Max. What's interesting too is something I you know because you know Eleven doesn't go by Jane and I think that's such a fascinating thing just because I guess it just stems from the fact is because Eleven is what she's kind of known by for this group and that's who she identifies as more so than Jane so I guess that's why she should still goes by Eleven because that's what Mike knows her by and that's and like I said that's what she resonates with so but I love it. It's like Mike and Eleven are constantly making out. And you have like Hop stepping into dad mode and being like, what did I tell you? Leave the door open three inches. And he, cause he looked through the, the little crack in the door and saw them making out. I was like, what did I tell you? He sounds like such a grumpy old man. But it's like every chance they get, they start making out, which pisses everyone off. Because their group of friends are like, dude, every time we turn around, they just make any excuse to get away so they can be with each other. It's like, come on, ew, that's gross. Like obviously Max thinks it's romantic, but everyone else. Is kind of pissed off about it just because you know, especially for Dustin, it's like, oh, I was away for you know a month at camp and now I'm back and it's just like everything is changing. Everyone would rather spend time with their respective girlfriends. Like, yeah, I got a girlfriend too, but he just feels like you know, you see it kind of like their group is kind of breaking apart. And I think that's such an interesting aspect to this season too because it plays that role for a lot of people, not just them. Because obviously it's a complicated thing because obviously like there's a whole Hopper situation. Like obviously he has a thing for Joyce, but obviously Joyce not willing to take those steps for, for, forward because obviously still it's been a year, but still like obviously the whole like Bob thing is still fresh enough of a wound that it's like, oh, Bob, Bob, no, especially because they give you that extra little scene to be like, oh, yeah, like her and Bob watching Cheers or something. It's like, ah, oh, stop breaking my heart. Stop with the feels, you know, and it, it sucks because Joyce is a little afraid to get close to anyone just because like everything's just kind of turned about. Obviously, we saw everything go down with her ex-husband and obviously she lost Bob last season. So it's a lie, you know, because, you know, she's kind of hanging on by third because she's trying to keep everything together. It's kind of like, okay, everything's over. But, you know, as a mom, she's still working. Because it actually turns out she was actually planning on selling their place even at the beginning of the season. Even Hop is like, did you not think I wouldn't know that you were planning on selling your place? Like, I already knew that ahead of time. But for her, it's more so like, you know, wanting to get a fresh start for her family and herself. It's like Hawkins is just too many bad memories and just too much bad stuff is going down, you know, just to kind of leave it at that, you know? 
And speaking of hop, kind of hopping back to uh, him being in dad mode and everything, I love that him and Joyce made that, like, come, came up with that speech and everything because he was so pissed. He's like, oh, that son of a bitch, Mike, he's corrupting her and everything. I love that. It was actually kind of adorable to see him kind of, like, entering dad mode like that. It's so uh, neat. And the fact of the matter is getting Joyce's help trying to, like, find the right wording and stuff like that. They actually came up with something. They wrote some stuff down. And she was like, when you say this to him, no matter what they say, don't get mad. But when he does, like, it's because Mike's whispering in Elle's ears and it's pissing him off and everything. It's just like you're not taking it seriously, even so it's supposed to be a serious moment. It's like nobody's in trouble, but it's just enough to kind of push his buttons enough that, you know, he has a very short temper. And when it's all said and done, he's threatening Mike and scaring him. But the fact of the matter is, it's like you need to put some distance between you and Elle, or the fact of the matter is, like, it's just, oh, it, he got so, so, like, you know, the stereotypical thing of, like, oh, yeah, here's the dad, like, oh, you're trying to take my daughter out for a. Uh, a day. Let me show you my shotgun. That type of aesthetic. I love it. And he's so proud of himself when Mike doesn't come over and everything. And eventually later on when Max is in, he's like, yes, he's celebrating. He's like, yeah, I did it. I'm the best dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the best? Hop's the best. You know, he's got that mentality about it and I love it. Uh, that he's so like he's so full of himself in that regard. You have the whole Nancy and um, Jonathan situation because obviously they're a little older so they have to like, you know, Figuring themselves out, put themselves in the real world now and everything. They're actually interning at the Hawkins Post, and everyone there is a complete another asshole because everyone's like, especially for Nancy, it's like, oh, you're a woman. Oh, she's trying to bring ideas to us. How about you focus on fixing these things and blah, blah, blah. You know, asshole stuff. And obviously, you know, Nancy just wants to prove herself so badly, so when the case with the rat situation, like I said, I'm going to circle back around to a lot of this stuff, came up, she jumped at the opportunity because, you know, I mean, especially in that time period, too, it's like, yeah, I mean, I'd say that time period, like, it's so, so long ago, which when actually break it down, that was a very long time ago, that was like 30 years ago, the 80s, borderline and going into the 40 years at this point in time, but nevertheless. And it's, it's actually kind of interesting because I really like the heart to heart she had with her mom, you know, Karen, that whole thing of like, because Karen, I think, could kind of understand of like, oh, yeah, like you just want to show people that you're not the kid that doesn't know what they're doing, that they might think you are. And I think, you know, maybe Karen looks at herself as like, I didn't take those opportunities. Like, because she looks at Nancy, she's like, you're a fighter. You stand up and fight for what you believe in. And I, you know, it's like, I don't know where you get that from. And I love that Nancy jokes and it's like, oh, yeah, I got it from dad. I love that they look at each other like, ha, ha, ha. And it's, it's so sad that. Ted is the butt of the joke in that same regard just because it's like, oh yeah, that's not Ted, Mr. Avoids Confrontation like nobody's business. But like I said, I really like that. Like Even that moment of her being like, yeah, you basically if they won't, you run your story and then you take it to a bigger newspaper and they basically essentially give the middle finger to those shitheads for not, you know, showing like, oh, what opportunity they ended up missing out on what you were trying to you know, go through. Because obviously... At least there's this complicated situation between Jonathan and, you know, Nancy in his regard of like, well, because Nancy comes from a situation where she is a, she comes from a well-off enough family that certain things like the mortgage and stuff like that, like, isn't something she has to necessarily worry about when it comes to college and stuff like tuition and stuff like that. But for Jonathan, it's a bigger issue because obviously he's got to help support his family. They're not as well off. And it was just kind of like a different, you know, you know money situation and it's and you know it's it, i like that jonathan did apologize because he was in a wrong for not understanding because like he couldn't understand what nancy was going through it's like you know you know it's, it's a complicated situation of just they were both angry and they were just not willing to see each other eye to eye because like both had valid points in their own regards but it's just like you can't see like yeah we kind of understand each other on this level but nevertheless um oh i'm um gotta go back on a lot of stuff um, obviously, I really like that this season kind of bolstered like the whole like Max and Eleven relationship, especially having rewatched season two. I was like, right, I forgot she was kind of pissed at Max for a while because she looked at Max of like, oh, you're getting close to Mike. It's like, no, you know, she didn't appreciate that. But now it's like, essentially, they become besties. And I like that because obviously there's a the whole complicated thing of like Mike kind of screwed up because he was lying about his grandma and I love that whole thing over the phone it's like yeah she might die and then his mom's on the phone what did you hear something from that he's like no mom what did I say hang on the phone what did I tell you about picking up the phone I told you multiple times and having like Max and kind of hype him up because it's like because I love like Lucas is trying to hype you know 
uh, mic up about the whole situation. They're like, I know how I'd help you navigate with this because me and Max, we've broken up like five different times. But like, she's broken up with me like five different times, but I always manage to win her back. And obviously, you know, Max is on the other side of things, being telling Elle like, Yo, when it's all said and done, he'll come crawling back to you and everything. They go in their shopping. So, like, it's so cool to see them be all like best buddies like that. Which obviously that brings up a complication later on because it's like, oh, you're trying. They're conspiring against us and everything. It's so interesting because that leads to a. I mean, it's so interesting because like the group is kind of divided in many different regards. Obviously, Will's dealing with everything of like, yeah, I'm losing my friends. Like, we're not playing G, uh, D and D anymore. You guys, you know, he tries to you know do a campaign, but they didn't want to do it. And he's like, what's the point? You guys got girlfriends and everything. Mike's like, what? You didn't expect us? You actually expected us to not get girlfriends and spend the rest of the time playing in your basement? And he was like, yeah, I was foolish enough to actually think that, you know, because you know, because he feels like they're falling apart. Because even like, hey, Dustin's not even here. Do you even know where he is? Do you even care? I understand why Dustin's kind of off on his own. He hasn't really gotten in contact with us because of the way everything's going down. Even that whole Castle Fire situation was kind of sad because obviously for him, it's just kind of like he felt like he was losing his best friends, you know. And so, I don't know, dude. It, it, and, you know, like I said, it's just everyone's divided because obviously Dustin was kind of pissed off about just everything because he felt like he was kind of being left out and left behind. So he kind of went off on his own meeting up with Steve, which Steve's having terrible luck with the ladies for him. He's still, try he's only, he's that stereotypical kind of a jock-ish dude of like trying to hold on to his glory. Well, for Steve, he feels like that's kind of all he has going for him is his cool factor. And um, I love the introduction of the character Robin and what she means. Like, like the fact that she's got a board tallying up every time he you know, strikes it with the ladies and he does it. And he just, he does it multiple, he does it multiple times. And he's just like, Oh, you're such a loser. I love it that she's not afraid to tear him down and all that. Um, also the intro, like not introduction, but I like that Erica was just kind of like a here and there character and previously. And now she's like one of the main characters this season. Like she's a full on addition. I'm like, that was such a good choice. Her dynamic with basically everyone is so good, but obviously when she's kicking up with Rob and Steve and Dustin, it's so good because she tells it like it is. She's so blunt. And once again, it's the show because it's not just her. Everyone in the, every kid in the show has a filthy mouth. I mean, to be fair, everyone in the show has a filthy mouth. That's just how people are. Because um, I think that's true to like how kids are. Kids will like have the filthiest mouths when you're not around and stuff like that. And constantly have to be called out for their language and stuff like that throughout it. But it's, it's such... The pairings are so good in that regard. And there's so many, so many interesting things. Like, the fact of the matter is that Nancy and Jonathan ended up meeting up with, like, um, everyone else with the exception of Dustin. Like, that crew of, like, uh, Mike... L, Max, uh, Lucas, and Will, like that, in fact, is that group met up together kind of early enough in the season, kind of took me by surprise, I was like, holy crap, also, I'd forgotten completely until I rewatched season two, the whole Billy and Karen thing, that was like, I was like, oh my god, how did I forget about this, and they elaborate on that more, he's getting all flirtatious with her, it's so interesting, because we never found out what exactly went down between season two and three, because there's certain aspects, like, obviously, I'm, I'm skipping around, but everything dealing with Billy, like, Max was kind of like, I hope it isn't you, it's like, you would feel like Max before wouldn't have given it, she wouldn't have cared, but it's like, I think maybe in that time frame, since she kind of set Billy straight, maybe... He stopped being as much of a dick. I guess no matter what the circumstances are, that's still your brother nonetheless. And I think, you know, seeing him in those circumstances, like I said, I'll dive into later on. But I guess seeing him in those circumstances kind of tugged at her heartstrings. So, you know, it's, she still cared no matter how much of a dick he was, you know. Also love the fact is that L spied on the boys and obviously like, oh, they're talking about, oh, women being a different species and Mike Burt bringing and Lucas farting. And it's just, I love that him farting kind of was enough to kind of snap her out of like her checking on him and her and uh, Max burst out laughing. It's, it's like the dynamics are so good. Like I said, like pairing right there, I'm just kind of like bringing Max and L together because they didn't really have many interactions if any at all last season. And to see them to kind of have their moment like this and to be buddies like that, I, like I said, I'd go as far as saying, like, that's our best friend. It's so dope. Obviously, you know, I, I, just so much. Okay, so let's break down about um, the whole situation with Mind Flare. I think I was under the impression for whatever stupid reason. I guess because it's been a long time since I've seen season two. Like, I haven't seen it since it originally came out uh, back in 2017. It's been that long. Uh, the fact is that... um. 
I was under the impression like there were multiple mind flares, but I'd forgotten so much about like, oh yeah, like that piece that was in Will was still outside when the gate was closed and like what we saw at the end. I thought like I, in my memory, I was thinking there was multiple ones, but it's just the one. I think when I originally watched season two, maybe I was under the impression in my head like it was dead. It's like, no, like she didn't kill it. She just closed the gate. Like I said, just like I think a lot of like my misinterpretation of a lot of stuff back then plus it, I think that just reson I, I guess that just kept recycling in my head until I thought that's how it went out but nevertheless um breaking down how this thing like went from like the rats and just like them ex like them exploding in the guts and that's how it formed its body is from their exploded flesh and the whole situation uh with Billy kind of getting dragged into it it's kind of interesting because Karen for a moment she hesitated she was taking off a winter and everything she was gonna meet up with Billy because he made uh, a whole Oh, like I can teach you lessons. The breaststroke and everything. I was like, wow. Okay, dude. Um, but, you know, sadly things didn't play out that way. Uh, Billy ended up getting possessed. I almost thought he got away. It's so interesting because that moment when he kind of flips into the upside down. So I was like, oh, I guess like once you get tapped by the thing, you kind of get a little bit of that true vision. Well, true. Is that what? True sight is what they kind of called it last season. But the moment like Billy's confronted with himself, I'm like, what the hell is that? I started immediately going, is this some, like some doppelganger stuff? It's like, there, is it, I mean, we explored the upside down to a certain extent, but it's like uh, doppelgangers isn't something we ever came across. But I guess that was just supposed to be representation of it because it's like, oh, build what I show you. And it makes sense because it's like it was showing him like this is the army I want you to build. You're going to be the first one in that. And slowly but surely he builds out an army getting Heather, Heather's parents. Um, like, it's so interesting, too, because a lot of the clues were there just right out of reach, but obviously they weren't there. Once again, that's the beauty of, like, these divided groups because it keeps the story growing while also giving certain people information but not giving them all the information. And it's nice when they slowly come together, like, oh, you got this piece of information? I got this piece of information. Let's put it together. Like I said, that's what this show does so well. Like, I never feel like no one's doing nothing. Everyone's off always doing something, getting some piece of the puzzle. So, like, it, I think the show utilizes its characters very well. Like I said, everyone is always doing something like, you know, they may not know what they're all up to, but they're usually, you know, doing some, you know, important stuff to the main overarching plot in some shape or form. So I always appreciate that about the show. The whole Billy thing was crazy. And especially just like, because obviously like it's different than the whole situation with Will. I guess I'm, I'm I guess because it started off stronger because in this in Will's case, it started off by possessing Will and. In this case, it gave itself flesh. It gave itself form in this world. So I guess it had a little more hold in this world than it would have previously. So it ends up being a situation of, like, Billy, like, even though he's possessing it, like, he becomes almost like a killing machine in itself. Especially, like, when the, the guy, whenever the kids end up confronting him, L goes to fight him and stuff. Like, literally throwing that barbell against him, pushing it against him on the, against the wall, but he's pushing back against her power. She literally threw him through a damn brick wall. He still got up and ran away. It's like, that SOB is tough. You know? And it's so sad because you can see cracks in Billy being there when he's telling Max. He's like, I'm so sorry. He made me do it and everything. And obviously finding out, like, oh, yeah, the mind flayer. Like, the fact of the matter is he spread himself amongst multiple people, not just one person. Like I said, this is a different thing. And especially when you see what it all ends up being, because it's almost like that thing. It, they never played with it too much, but it could have been. I, it's, it's fine that they didn't do it. The whole thing of, like, you never know who got, you know, flayed, uh, as they said. But, um... Which, it plays a certain role in it, but at the same time, you know, once they kind of find out, like, oh, we don't know how many people got inflated, that was kind of, like, the last time. Because, like, the last person you didn't know about was, like, Tom. The moment they found out, wait, Heather, wait, as in, wait, and then Nancy and Jonathan put it together, that's why Tom was acting weird like he was. So, also, uh, Jake Busey. Uh, worked at the post uh, with them, so I was, I was like, oh, I was like, I immediately noticed. I was like, hey, that's Jake Busey. Okay, so that was interesting. Um, also, like how this all tied, like it's interesting too, because there's like two big plot elements that deal with each other while also technically being separated. That was the whole Russian angle and the whole mind flare thing. Those are actually two separate things that were kind of happening. Co maybe not coincidentally maybe it's just kind of fate and just them kind of being drawn together but those storylines they overlap but they were never directly overlapping because the russians never found out about the monster and everything that was going down and 
the monster, I mean, to our knowledge, it never came about like, oh, we're going to utilize the Russians. It's like, that never became a thing, so. Okay, then, so, um, I, you know, like I said, there's just so much to go over. Okay, so, there's a whole Alexei situation, which was kind of interesting, like, that was, I'm wondering, I mean, I'm, I attribute that whole, like, the Russian dude, like, the heavy hitter dude, that, uh, the first time, uh, he, uh, dang, uh, Hopper goes against him, ends up getting his ass beat. Bad dude puts Hop down quick. Um, that dude, it, I think they kind of had Terminator vibes from him, especially because he like he kind of had the jacket and the aesthetic and stuff like that. They even make a reference to Arnold at one point in time. I forgot what the exact circumstances were though. It's interesting because I, I made the argument that dude amongst anyone was kind of like the main antagonist on the human side of everything. So, But nevertheless, that's me going on a, on a, on a tangent. Um, the fact of the matter is the whole Alexi situation and the fact that Hop was getting so pissed with him because it's like, oh, I want a cherry slurpee instead of strawberry and everything. Because obviously it's like there's already, ten, already tension between Joyce and Hop and then like oh yeah add in Murray it's like I loved I've completely forgotten about that character he pops up like three times last season like in three episodes maybe four but I completely forgot I was like how did I forget about Murray I love Murray and so I'm glad we got even more of him this season especially because Hop has to be with him and everything because he's the only one that's in that uh, area that knows how to speak Russian so they can translate, he can translate stuff for Alexei. And I love that he's got this whole plan of like, okay, this guy you know, it's not going to help and stuff like that until I get him a cherry slipper. Okay. And Hop kicks him out and everything. And it's like, oh, he's like, don't worry, he's going to come back around. And I love it. It's like, oh, he gets in a car and everything. It's like, oh man, Hop, you are super wrong. He's like, wait for it. And Joyce comes running out and they, they look. He was in a car and he'd driven away, but he stopped and like, Hop turned out to be right. I love it. I mean, he called it. He is actually very good at what he does. Also, I love the whole thing between him and Joyce because, like, Joyce helped him figure out a lot. I mean, she kind of put a lot of this stuff together because I obviously love the whole Hop thing, getting jealous about um, uh, Mr. Clark and, like, wait, well, you went to him? You're supposed to be having dinner with me. It's supposed to be a date, which he made it clear before. It's like, oh, it's not supposed to be a date. It's just it's supposed to be a dinner between friends, but obviously, like, he got all dressed up at a fancy place, and so... He obviously, you know, thought of it as more than just like, oh, we're having dinner. So he just wasn't willing to admit it. I even love it later on when um, Murray kind of busts because uh, he did what he did for uh, Nancy and Jonathan last season. He's doing it now for Joyce and Hopper. And he's basically like, you two are obviously into each other. You both just have your own issues, which is keeping you from being together and everything. And even Alexi's like, wait, they haven't had sex yet. And then. Uh, Murray's like, no. And they both start laughing about it. And you have Joyce and Hop in the front just being super awkward and quiet. Because after the whole conversation, it's us. It just kind of caught them on guard. And I love it. But obviously, their side of things is figuring out, okay, what this is all about. Because obviously, they had the key. They had the machine, as we saw at the beginning of the season of, like, the Russians ended up doing... I mean, because that was something Owens... Was, he literally brings that up last season. of Like, we can't let these secrets come out. Because the last thing we would want is our enemies, uh, you know, or whatever, to kind of know about what we're up to. And lo and behold, it turns out the Russians, like, back in 84, were doing the exact same thing. Somehow, in some shape or form, they found out about it. Now, that could circle back around to something later on. I'm not going to remember it, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it now. Bring it up now. The American they were mentioning at the end. My mind immediately goes like, "Oh, do you think that could potentially be Hop?" Like I said, I'm hopping around here, so I do apologize. But I'm going to get it out of my head because if I don't say it now, I'm not going to remember to say it later on. But it's like, "Oh yeah, that's Hop." My mind is, if they know about the upside down, you know, using the machine to kind of punch hole into another world and everything, my mind then goes, uh, the other person I thought about was Brenner. Because remember, there was a dude last season that um. They met uh, when when during when um, Kaylee and or is it Kelly and um, Eleven had met and the whole situation of they're trying to get revenge against everyone that had anything to do with what happened to them and to the point that you know it's the situation of that particular dude that they were after in the episode. It turns out he was like, oh no, like your papa, he's still alive and everything. So it begs the question, like that would make sense if he knows about the project and everything, and then the Russians ended up getting their hands on him. That would explain how they got there because like nowhere else in the season did explain how they knew about the upside down like they did. So that was just kind of interesting all on its own.
But kind of saying that same realm of things, kind of getting back what I was kind of discussing, it is kind of interesting, the whole aspect of like, yeah, they had the key, basically the means to open up a gate, just not the exact area. Obviously, it makes sense. Hawkins kind of being like the beacon point for all this stuff in the first place. So it makes sense that that's the right place to kind of use their so-called key to punch a hole and open up the upside down. It is kind of sad with that whole situation, um, you know, especially because Murray got really close to Alexia and just for things to kind of end up that way. Like, even though he was kind of an enemy, like, because, you know, once again, Hop explained, like, the dude's more scared of everyone else than he was, you know, them. And it's just, like, I, he, you know, because even, you know, Joyce kind of liked him. And, you know, I think even, you know, because even Hop felt bad when it was all said and done. Because, you know, he knows that he didn't deserve it. Especially because he was helping them stop all of this. And like I said, you know, because Murray had that moment with him about the fair games and stuff like that. How everything's rigged. And he just won a Woody Woodpecker. And then he gets killed. It's just like, ugh, garbage. You know, it, just, it sucks. It's just like, no! Uh, it just kind of hit, it didn't hit me the same way, obviously, like losing Bob. But it kind of, it kind of felt similar in that same area to a certain extent, you know? I do love the fact is that it's like, yeah, uh, Alexi talked about the fact is he admired uh, Hop's courage, but uh, referring to him as Fat Rambo, because even Slim Rambo would have a hard time getting into that facility because it's so hard for people to break in. It's nearly impossible. And it's funny, literally hard cut to Dustin and Erica making their way through the place. So I just thought that was kind of neatly done. Uh, there's the mayor who's played by Carrie, I'm probably going to butcher his name, Yules. I've seen that actor in plenty of things. Like, one of the things is Despero from, like, Psych is one of the things that kind of comes to my mind. But was it like, he's one, like, from a Robin Hood movie, isn't it? Like, Robin Hood Men in Tights or something like that. But, um... Yeah, he's the dickbag mayor who actually kind of is the reason why this whole thing kind of goes down. I think that's why Joyce kind of kicks his ass later on because it's like, yeah, you are responsible for everything going down. You basically gave them the footing they needed to. He basically sold up a lot of properties. They're the ones that were invested in the mall. Like, he's the reason why it all went down and he's trying to get reelected and stuff like that. It's also interesting because it's the first time the whole mayor situation is coming up. Like, it never came up at all in season two. And I don't remember anything ever coming up in season one. So it's just kind of interesting that this is our first introduction to the mayor. And it turns out the mayor's kind of a dick. Especially that whole scene between him and, you know, um, Hopper being like, okay, like, what about the stuff about you? You're adultery. You know, you're sleeping with your assistant or secretary. And then also the fact is that time I found you with some white powder around your nose. And he's like, oh, and what about you, Hop? With you, you know, your pills and you're drinking on the job. It's like, don't come to me, you know, because I'll drop all the stuff about you as well. And don't come Come to me about your dead daughter because I'm past that. I don't care. It's like, oh, uh, worst thing to say because then Hop proceeded to break his nose and toss him around until he got the information he wanted. I love that, you know, it's not, I mean, to be fair, this is about stopping all this bad stuff, especially because they want to make, you know, this, you know, place safe for everyone, you know, including, you know, their families, you know, their children, you know, so it's a situation of, yeah, Joyce is going to be more okay if, you know, Opera has to get a little more rough. It's actually sad, too, because I, I didn't talk about it, but obviously, like, her stepping into the building and having to basically look... Because I remember Bob did just die, like, right close to the entrance, and it's like... It just having to remember that. It's just like, oh, that sucks, you know? Obviously, I didn't talk enough about it, but let's, let's circle back to our uh, group of Dustin, Erica... Uh, Robin and Steve. You gotta give major props to Robin because she was the one that was able to kind of decipher the puzzle in the first place, kind of get mixed up in all of this and everything. Um, I just love it because obviously, like, there's this, you know, Steve has kind of already been in his babysitter position. Now he's got someone else tagging along in the babysitter position, even more so in this case because obviously they're dealing with Erica, which I love the fact is she's like calling this the child endangerment plan. And it's like, can we please stop calling it that? She wants a life, life supply of like free ice cream from this place if I'm going to do this. Like, she's super smart. This season just really showcases that because the fact is she's like, oh, like, this is a, 
was it free market economy or something like that and being uh and it's like saying stuff like that it's like yo i even love it later on when dustin like gets on her about being a nerd she's like i'm not a nerd because she's calling everyone else a nerd but he's like yeah the equations you just did in your head makes you a nerd fact of the matter is this and that about my little my uh little pony blah 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 and she's like oh how do you know all that about my little pony he's like because i'm a nerd nerd and you can tell it rubs her the wrong she's like mm. i love that you know I, even later on when it's murray murray's like why is this four-year-old talking to me because she's talking mad shit to him and um hop because hop's almost looking hop's looking at it the same way like who the hell is this little kid talking to me like this um and she's like, I'm 10, you bald-headed bastard, or something like that. And Lucas is like, Erica, he's, and she's like, what? It's the truth? It's like, if you don't rely on us to get you through that place, you're going to die. And I just love that. It kind of reminds me about Joyce kind of screaming out two points. One, when she chews out Murph, uh, Murray and just talking about the fact that the matter is kind of what the circumstances are and just kind of yelling at him. It's like, we have literally have no choice but to rely on you because for whatever reason, you can speak Russian, which I'm just still kind of wrapping my head around but whatever I accept it so you need to help us and she ends it with please and then the same thing with the US government get Owens down here now thank you have a good day it's just it's so good Joyce going into like mom mode like that and stuff you know kind of being like my kids future is on the line like everything's on the line get down here now you know type of thing I love that uh, but kind of circling back to Murray really quickly the whole thing of them calling him bald ego and I love him being just like I hate, I hate kids. I just love that, just being his thing, and just him always having to respond to it. It's like, this is bald eagle. Um, but also, another thing I want to talk about is the whole Mike and Eleven's relationship. Obviously, I've said they, like, had their downs in a lot this season, because, like, Mike apologized for, like, lying to her, but then it's like, oh, she's also pissed about the fact that she saw and heard what we were saying about women being different species, so he kind of dug himself a deeper hole, but, you know, that moment where it's just kind of like, obviously, he's chewing Max out, it's like, oh, you're abusing her powers, this and that, because obviously, Mike is, you know, he, he cares about her, so he doesn't want her to push herself too hard, it's like, we need to find another way, but it's like, we need Eleven, she's like the only weapon in this fight, she's the only one that can help us track people down like figure things out and you know mike is just going back and forth about everything it's like yeah i trust her and everything i just i love her and i'm, I'm afraid i don't want to lose her again and i love that moment everyone in the room gets quiet it's like oh he just said what he said he's like what and then 11 comes up she's like what's going on and he's like what nothing just a family conversation it just kind of completely jumps over there i was like oh that's so adorable it's like oh that's so sweet but I do like, you know, they do kind of get past, like, their issues and obviously, like, you know, sharing M&Ms and just having that cute moment. I even love it later on when he's trying to tell her, you know, it's like, you know, I forgot what the phrase was. He was trying to be, and I love him. was like, I don't get what you're talking about. He's like, you know, you know that thing and say blank. She's like, girlfriends. He's like, no, boyfriends. He's like, no, not girlfriends, not boyfriends. It's like, you know, the thing people say, I just like, he's beating around the bush so much. I just love that. I also can't forget what I think is one of the most adorable moments in this. It's a whole Susie and Dustin thing. That was so adorable. She's like, do it. And he's like, no. She's like, kind of, it was his way of making up for the fact is that he hadn't contacted her in all the time. He tried to, but it just didn't work out. And he has to sing, they sing in the song and just everyone's just looking. Like, I love you have like Joyce almost like in the corner, just leaning up against the wall. And you just have Hop sitting there almost like. Oh my God, what the hell is going on? And just everyone in the car with Jonathan and Nancy just looking around just like, what? What is going on? Erica looking like, what? I just love everyone has the, the same vitriol reaction and I love it. It's so good. But like I said, it's still kind of a cute and adorable moment. They're so cute together. My dusty bun. Uh, I even love that Max and uh, Lucas make fun of him about it later on. And he just gives him the middle finger and just like swirls it around. It's like, yeah, this is all for you guys. You make cracking jokes and stuff like that. He's like, I'm not going to send you anything because that's just between me and Susie. Obviously, I'm talking a lot more about the characters. So I should also dive into the whole monster situation in many different regards. Whether it be like the first like full-on monster introduction uh, at the hospital uh, with Nancy and Jonathan dealing with Tom and I think what was it Bruce I once again like I didn't talk about this earlier but this season was so tense I feel like I don't know maybe it's just because I, obviously the subsequent seasons it's been a while since I initially watched him so I don't remember that initial feel but I feel like this season was kind of scarier to me in certain regards 
because I, I don't know what it was. It just kind of, it just felt tense and imposing, especially when you're dealing with like the mind flare and it's full, to a certain extent, it's full form in the this season. But just even before then, like when like, just like Tom and Bruce were technically dead and they merged together and become that small one. And it took um, L like, bashing that thing around and throwing it out the window. It's so interesting because they never explained it, but it almost seemed like it had a personal vendetta against Nancy. Part of my brain wondered is, did it come after Nancy to a certain extent? Because it remembered what Nancy did back in season two, when it's like, oh, when it's inside of uh, Will, she took uh, Iron Rod and like, uh, he did... Um, Poke, uh, iron poker and put it to a side and burned him. So part of me wonders was it supposed to, because it, it, like I said even Jonathan was there but it still went after Nancy. Makes you wonder why specifically. It, it, that never really came up in an explanation. We do understand later on why it's so fixated on L because I was so interested because I was like, oh we're doing this for you. I was like okay, my mind mentioned like, is this supposed to be like this thing being like, oh I want to make you my queen type of thing? That's what I initially thought but then it's like, no it wants, like everything it's done has been so it can amass power because it, because it, because initially when Billy and L meet face to face for the first time, and he was like, "Oh," and then while they were leaving, it remembered uh, the Mind Flayer remembered her from when she closed the gate. So that's why I was like, "Oh, I see what this girl is capable of. Got to take care of her first. So that's what this was all about: like gathering up the strength to kill her first, and then killing everyone else. Like this has been a long plan of like planning that out. Which once again shows you just the mind flare. I mean, even because I think I like let it slip my mind how calculating it ter technically was the way it used Will last season that I didn't really think of. You know, realize is how tactical this thing is it seems like it's just an entity that like devours or something but there is some tactic to it you know it is kind of just a monster at the end of the day but still there was it, in, intriguing levels to its whole situation especially you know like i said when it goes full form and it's so sad too because everyone that forms with it is dead i was wondering like okay so once you shut this whole situation down can you save those people it's like no once that's done there's no saving them like if they were going to save anyone maybe they could have saved billy just because like the similar circumstances to will but it, you know obviously like i said you know everything didn't work out like that sadly i mean this thing was like some pretty tough fights because i like i brought this up in a video i was like because i got i could tell just by the trailers i felt like this is the most like full-on fights we've seen ellen and she's just constantly pushing herself the entire season like using her power over and over with not too much of a rest in between like at one point when like the tentacles are breaking through the house, she's holding off one and then another. And then when like the monster's there and its head is poking through, she like rips it in half, but not fully enough because she's just like, she's wearing, worn herself thin. You know, it's, at first it just seems mainly like it might just be because like she's just used too much of her power and it's taking its all. I mean, that's the, that's something that comes up too. It's like, you know, using her powers too much. Maybe it'll have a toll on her brain. It's like, you don't know that, but it's like, no one knows that. Like no one a hundred percent understands like, what Eleven's whole thing is and what kind of effects long term they might have on her, even short term effects. I mean, it seems like later on when like that actually kind of surprised me. She straight up lost her powers for a while. I was wondering if it was just from exhaustion and just pushing herself so she needs even longer to recharge or was it just because that thing was in her leg and somehow it kind of poisoned her to make it so she couldn't use her powers because her powers stopped. She even tried to do like the Coca-Cola can thing, which I love that that's an argument later on. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe you're drinking that. Luke is like, what are you talking about? It's like the, comparing it between the thing, the original and like the remake and you're like, like, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't, you don't like, he's like, no, I'm not talking, we're not talking about the thing, we're talking about Coca-Cola, and it's just like, that was a whole argument, and then Eleven had to be like, hey, and they're like, sorry, sorry, you know, I love that, just kind of putting them to shame for, like, their stupid arguments about stuff like that, just kind of that thing of, like, you just find stupid things to argue about, you know? But getting back to what I was saying, because like the thing is, like most of Elle's fights, like obviously she's had some struggles. Like season one, the Demogorgon, tough enough battle. Season two, closing the gate, tough enough battle. But I feel like this is like obviously the most back-to-back -back fights of just like fighting this thing in many different avenues and just not getting any headway. This thing was super tough. Like this is like, because I feel like most of her fights throughout the course of the series, like I said, with the exception of those heavy hitters, most of her fights are very 
one-sided easily. Like, she didn't rip through the Demodogs like there were nothing last season. But, like, this season kind of gave her a lot of struggle just because she was using her power so much. I mean, she was kind of the only one they could rely on with fighting this thing and just how powerful it's gotten. I mean, literally, it weaponized itself specifically for the intent of killing her. So, it was, you know, it was it was a matchup for the ages. It was meant to go down like that. It was meant to be a counteraction to who she is and what she's capable of doing. I also didn't talk about it, but it was kind of interesting to also see the Mind Flayer in its full form to a certain extent. Because obviously all last season we saw it in its shadow form, but to see it like... Little, I think I even brought this up uh, during a video. Like, it looks like a Resident Evil monster. It straight up looks like something you see out of a Resident Evil. Just like all fleshy and slimy like that. It's disgusting. Especially at points where you see it dissolve. Like that point in the hospital when it went into the sewer and you saw a bone left. It's just like, ugh, that's just gross and like I said it's just sucky considering everyone that ends up ultimately dying because of that whole situation you know because it can never come back there was no fixing that I also want to talk about something else I thought was kind of fascinating it's like when L first kind of uses her powers to kind of like uh, you know, because they were messing around. It's like, oh, let's see what Billy's up to. And that's the whole Heather thing that Billy turned at one point and he looked at Elle and it's like, she was almost like, wait, what? Like, you can almost see it from his perspective. Like, she's fading in and out like a mirage or something. I was like, oh, because even like, you know, it came up later on of like, oh, yeah, like Mike did that, you know, obviously back in season two. He could to a certain extent, but it seemed like Billy had a much grander understanding and picture of her but to be fair it became even more true when she took a deep dive into you know his mind to try and find out where the source of you know the mind flayer was and it's actually kind of sad because obviously we deep dived into uh billy's memories and saw that memory of him on the beach with his mom and it's more like because obviously we got a little peek last season when we saw him, how much of an asshole his dad is we got even more of a peek in that to see like oh how old. and it's, it's sad too because those memories connected to that creature were like deeper and closer to the storm and obviously that's where I guess a lot of more of his darker memories like it buried itself deep deep down within his core I guess it's kind of locked away with all the darker stuff like obviously you know his dad wasn't just abusive towards him towards his mom too I mean I, I it never came up but maybe that applies to Max's mom too who knows but still it's just kind of like you understand why he became the bully he did he kind of got like I said you got a picture of that last season but even more so now that you're kind of like oh you understand even more so because he did it's it wasn't just a little bit here and there like his dad was full-on abusive to him and his mom so it's you know he perpetuated that you know cycle of violence what was done to him he did to other people and then there's the whole situation with Elle when her leg is messed up, having to use her powers to rip it out of her leg. And it's just like, oh, especially because Jonathan was going to try and cut it out. But she, she's like, no, I got this and rips it out of her leg. It's like, Ugh. But it seems like that might have been one of the last instances that she had her full-blown powers, isn't it? Because, like, after that, she tries to move the car, but she wasn't able to. So that's why I'm like... I feel like it had to have something to do with her powers, potentially. Maybe it kind of dampened her for a bit, because, like, for the rest of going forward, like, because yeah, that was, like, episode seven, I think. Maybe that was, yeah, I believe so. And in episode eight, she didn't have her powers at all, I believe. For the entire episode, so... Some other high points, too, is let's not forget the whole thing of, like, Nancy being all badass. It's like Billy's driving towards her with the car. She's standing with the handgun. Bam, bam, bam. It's like, yo, he's getting close. I was like, okay, is Nancy going to hit him? It's like she runs out of bullets. I was like, okay, what's going to happen? Is Elle going to stop? And it's like, yo, Steve and Robin come in with the car and hit Billy. I also love it. It's like, oh, yeah, that was the, the car that Todd and Joyce, no, I mean, uh, Hop and Joyce had stolen from uh, Todd. I love that whole thing of like, oh yeah, this guy, he's a child murderer. And it's like, oh, Detective uh, Byers, I was just telling him we got to uh, commandeer his vehicle. It's like, oh, right. Yeah, this guy's a, a bit criminal. And I forgot what it was she was saying, but then like uh, Hop was corrected of being like, oh, child murderer. And she's like, child murderer? It's almost like, why do you have to go that? I guess it makes sense because you have to make him a dangerous criminal, but why there? And so she's almost got that reaction, which I love. But it's like, once Steve saw, he's like, oh, hell yeah, this ain't like the uh, the Todd father. Your new daddy is Steve. And it's like, whoa, did you just talk about yourself in third person? And did you just talk about the car calling you daddy? Erica says, I love that. It's so good. But you also can't forget about your boy Luke is coming through with the fire uh, crackers and stuff like that. Uh, it was his idea. Like, I love even Max being like, 
thinking he was stupid, but I think, hey, it worked out in the end in that regard, so. And you also gotta love the whole thing of, like, when new people get brought in, it's like, oh yeah, like, Erica heard the story from Dustin, she believed everything except for anything related to Lucas, he's like, and Dustin was like, really? That's the only thing you don't believe is your brother's involvement in all this? And it's like, whoa, what happened? And then it's like, the car had gotten tossed, and Robin's like, what was up with that? Dustin's like, oh yeah, she did that. They're like, wait, what? And then Steve's like, yeah, she can move stuff with her mind. It's almost like, yeah, come on, Robin, catch up. It's like, wait, what? I love that. Just like, I always love it when new people get, like, get welcome to this world of like, oh my god, what the hell am I involved in? Actually, one of the things that really got me in this season, kind of, you know, talking about the Billy situation, like, obviously when, you know, she's getting to Billy, and Billy's defending her from the monster, when she's able to kind of reach Billy inside his humanity, talking about that memory she saw of his mom and him being happy, and he actually defends her from the monster, and almost, you know, kind of gets attacked like Bob, similar to Bob, and I'm like, this is kind of like the real Bob moment of like, no! And it sucks because once again, Billy's a dick, but you know, you kind of felt bad for him in the long run because I mean, he hadn't done too much dickish stuff because everything he had done that was dickish this season was all stuff related to um, the Mind Flayer. And it's like it ends up killing him, and Max is there having to say, you know, he's like, and last thing he says to her is, I'm sorry. And it just, it sucks. Like he was kind of the hero in that regard because he protected L, you know? Like I said, I feel a little weird, but the fact, like I said, he was a dick last season, but I kind of teared up a little bit, being like, oh man, that sucks, it, it broke my heart. And then the other thing that breaks your heart is the freaking Joyce and um, Hopper situation, because it's like, yeah, they finally kind of admit how they feel about each other, they even setting up date night and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, it's going to be sweet, you finally get your date. Never crossed my mind that Hopper wouldn't make it out of this. Never crossed my mind. His final showdown with that Russian dude, oh my god. Dude, like, especially when he's like, I'll see you in hell, throws him into the thing, and he gets blended up into, a, like, a red mist. It's like, ugh. But then he gets stuck on the other side, and Joyce has to turn the key, and he even gives her the nod, like, do it. And it's like, oh, because he had that heart-to-heart -heart moment with um, L2 where he was telling her, like, you know, oh, dude, it's just... Because, you know, because even, too, like, it's like, okay, so how about 10? It's like, no, me and, uh, on Friday nights, me and, you know, L watch Miami Vice together, and it's like, okay, it's 7. He's like, okay, it's a date. Oh, is it like a date date? She's like, Hopper, stop before I end up changing my mind. It's so adorable, and it just sucks, especially because Joyce has to be in that, that you know, it's just, it's that thing of, like, you waste so much time, because that's the thing, too, like, I always thought Hopper and Joyce were going to get together, like, there was hints of that in season one, I mean, because obviously it seems like there was obviously something even way back then in high school, potentially, but, like, Bef like, I would have thought, like, oh, going into season two, that's where things would have gone, but then the whole Bob thing happened, and I'm like, okay, after Bob, it's like, well, there's still that period of, like, you can tell they kind of had a thing for each other, um, because they had that moment, too, didn't they, of, like, they held, I, I know definitely it happened with Robin and Steve of holding hands, and then being like, oh, ugh, almost like, whoa, what the hell was that? I'm pretty sure Hopper and Joyce had one like that, didn't they? I think they might have, I don't remember. I even love Karen being like, oh, they make such an odd couple. And Ted's like, well, there's someone there for everyone. And you see her just kind of look at her husband. You see her go, <sighs> and it's like, oh, that's, that's actually kind of sad. It's one of those things. I, I made a reference to this before. I don't remember what I was talking about when I made reference to it. But I made a reference to the TV show Moral Oral, like how Oral's parents got together. It almost seems like that with Karen and Ted, which is kind of very sad. If you don't understand the reference, basically, it's a reference of like, oh, these people are just kind of, oh, we're together, there's not really much love there, which, eh, uh, it's hard to say, but still. It's really sad, too, because for L, she, uh, you know, for Joyce, it's like, okay, the man, obviously, you know, there was feelings there. He was actually one of probably the only reasons why she wasn't, she was like, okay, because obviously she was set on kind of getting her and you know, the boys out of Hawkins, but he was one of the reasons why she would have stayed, but losing him just kind of, it's like, no, I got to go with that original plan. I think probably what Bob said last season probably got that in Joyce's head of like probably moving away, but also at the same time, it's just probably just like literally everything that went down season one and season two is enough to make you go like, we probably should move away in some shape or form. But um, along with that, like I said, you know, for... L, she lost the only dad she really you know forget the whole Brenner situation like this is her one true dad and she lost him you know didn't even have him that long in her life but still and I will not lie to you that letter at the end I started tearing up I was like stop it stop it with the feels and it's like ah Hopper no and it just like 
just like a L tearing up too, because it's a combination of dad plus the buyers are moving away and she's going with them, which also begs the question, what about her Aunt Becky and her mom? I mean, that's a, a, another situation all on its own, I'm sure, but maybe she could visit them from time to time. I, I'm not really sure where she really stands in that whole regard, but it's just like... I don't know, it's like, it's almost like the band's getting broken up, because, like, you know, Nancy has to say goodbye to Jonathan, and just, and I love that line of, like, oh, yeah, a wise man once said, you know, like, we have shared trauma, you know, referencing what Murray said to them last season, and that whole thing of, like, you know, Nancy adding, like, well, what's a little more, and, like, him touching her hand, and, you know, the scar from, um, the Demogorgon thing, when they cut their hands to draw it in with their blood in season one, and it's just like, oh, it's just, you know, and then, like, you know, Mike and L, like obviously L's powers still haven't come back, but Mike's like, no, they'll come back. And then, you know, he quite doesn't say what he has to say, but then L is like, you know, what you said, you know, back at the cabin, he's like, what? And it's like, she heard what he said, and she's like, I love you too. And I'm like, young love, it's so beautiful. It's like, ah, it's just so like sweet and adorable. But it's like, ah, stop, stop it. The feels, the feels, dude. Oh, the feels. And she's, you know, having to say goodbye to Will. Will's even donating his, you know, D&D &D stuff. And it's like, oh, aren't you going to need that? What, you going to need to play with some other party? But he's like, nah. It's like, this is my party, and I'm never going to get any other party. It's like, best bros for life. Hell, when it got reunited, it's like, yeah, I know we went through a lot. You know, it's like, I was pissed at you guys. It's like, yeah, I missed you guys. And Dustin was like, Dustin was telling him he missed him, and they missed him. And then they hug it out. They had their bro moment. I'm like, ah, oh, dude. Best friends forever, dude. It's it's so good and it just it it's very heartwarming and stuff. And it, but you know, like I said, at the same time, it's just so sad because you're cutting back and forth between the goodbyes and her reading the letter from Hopper, and it's just it's so sweet what he says, and it's just like oh. it's like basically take it easy on your old man and keep that door open three inches. It's like oh, Hopper, no, oh my heart. My heart can't take it. It's like they're moving away, and it's like they'll be back during like holidays and stuff like that. But it's just kind of like it's so sad because obviously, like their last event, like obviously we got like there's three months skip, you know, at the end. So it's like you know they probably spend as much time together as they could, but it still doesn't make the ending any easier on them. And it's just like oh man, that actually kind of sad. And to me, I'm like okay, the way you're setting it up, it almost feels like a full fledged like you can end things here. Even, you know, aside from the stuff at the end of season four, I mean, at the end of season three, you know, obviously I'll, I'll, uh, I'll circle back to that. Obviously that sets up future stuff. But there's also the whole thing of like, well, what about, um, once again, is it, uh, I always get it wrong in my head. Is it, I think it's Kali. Um, everything related to her, she was like a one episode thing last season. And then there's a the whole thing of like, it didn't get touched on it all this season so that can definitely be something in the future and what about the whole situation of the whole Brenner thing like I said if that ending at the end of season three ends up being the case of like okay so as we can see in Russia there's a Demodog which turns into a Demogorgon so it's like okay so either they had captured that ahead of time or that's supposed to represent the fact is that they did ultimately end up finishing their portal to the upside down which is still like okay so that must mean that's something that's under their control is that something that was dealt like they accomplished in that year period from 84 to 85 was it something after season three like once again that also comes down to like that whole remark of bring the american like not the american once again is that hopper i'm kind of hoping for but i kind of get the feeling like it might be etching towards the thought of like that might be brenner because that's something potentially like i said brought up in season two that was never tackled in uh this season at all along with the whole um Kali situation so that's something to be uh considered Obviously, like, you know, potentially in a fourth season, where would things take us going forward with, like, everyone? You know, like, they're down, you know, a Will and an L, you know. So, what's their group going to look like going forward? Would they add in new people? Well, because that's the whole thing. Will's not going to change his party, so they wouldn't change their party for Will, you know, or replace him or L, you know. So maybe they'd add more people, but maybe they just wouldn't change it and get an all new group. Like, you know, Will was like, I wouldn't get an all new group because you're still my part. So it doesn't mean they won't modify, but I don't know. That depends. Because obviously they made exception with, 
you know, Max, so who's to say they won't do the same in the future? There's a the whole Steve and Robin thing, which I thought was kind of cute, because the whole thing of, like, um, Dustin kept pointing out the fact is, like, oh, you've got an awesome girl in front of you, but, you know, Steve's kind of in his mindset of, like, oh, yeah, popular girls and stuff like that, just because, of he, like I said, the whole thing of he's kind of the dude that really lives his glory days. Um, I actually like what they did with his story with Robin, because obviously he kind of starts liking her the more time they spend together. I even love the whole situation of, like, him them getting drugged and kind of being high. Like, her explaining back to the future Future to him, and he's like, "Why is it called Back to the Future? Because you're trying to get back to the future." And he's like, "What? What?" <laughs> and but also, um, also, poor Steve when he got tortured, had the crap beat out of him like that. I also love it later on. It's like, "Yeah, let's go back." It's like, "Yeah, it's probably a good thing we don't go back to your place, Dustin, because I uh, kind of told him your full name." And he's like, "Why would you do that? I was drugged." He's like, "So, so you fight through it. Tough guys just push through being drugged and forced to tell the truth, you know." Um, but I, like I said, I like what they did with Robin because it seemed like, a, oh, hey, Steve found new love, which he does like Robin. But then like Robin kind of was like begrudging about the whole thing. And I was like, wait, what? Because at first she made it seem like, oh, because obviously like, you know, he's Mr. Popular and everything. And like everyone just wants to be popular in some shape or form. Just kind of want to be, just kind of fit in even with just the normal people, not just being an outcast. But it's like, we were in the same classes and did you, you don't even remember me, do you? So I thought it was kind of leaning in that direction. But like she had that look on her face like, oh, like. You know, like I said, she was a little bit begrudging. I was like, what's up with that? And she basically admits, like, the reason why is because there was a girl in our class, Tammy, who liked you. And, I, you know, as you know, I kind of, like, she admitted, like, oh, I'm a little bit obsessed. It's not like I was obsessed with you. And the moment she was kind of saying that, I was, like, I was like, are you about to say you were obsessed with Nancy? But the way she was talking about Nancy being a priest or whatever, and I'm like, oh, no. And it's like, she's like, uh, Tammy. And he's like, oh, but she's a girl. And then uh, Robin's like, yeah. And it's like, oh. But I love the way, you know, Steve responded in that regard. He was like, Oh, really? Her? Tammy? I mean, come on. She's, like, kind of just, like, joking around about just how, like, dull or whatever she is and just, like, her singing and just being, ter her singer being, ter like, you know, and I thought that was, that's so nice of, like, how he handled that of being, like, oh, no, like, I'm immediately going to be, like, no, it doesn't, ch like, the dynamic changes a little bit because I like you, but it doesn't change the fact that I do like you. We can just take that as just, continue that as a friendship rather than it potentially being anything more. So I just, I thought that was just a nice way to handle it, especially you can tell Robin appreciate it because, like, you accept me even knowing that. Because she was even saying, like, things might be different between the moment he heard that, but it, like, it didn't change anything, you know? And even that whole situation of him getting a job at the end at the video store, Keith, um, I even love um, Robin kind of hooking him up and like, oh my god, you bring him in there? There's going to be tons and tons of girls that fall. I mean, oh, we just basically almost like we had to beat them. Oh, there were so many girls. We had to beat them away with a broomstick just like because they were in droves coming after uh, Steve. Coming in ice cream. We had to get this and that. Like, obviously, she's, she's hyping them up. Basically, I'm like, oh my god, think about it. Like, if he has so many women around him, there's like, there'll be so many women coming to see Steve, but that'd be too much for little old Steve to handle, so it's like, you can come in for the kill too, Keith, you know, so trying to work that angle, so I thought that's pretty dope, and it's like, oh, are you two a thing, and then she's like, no, we're just friends, and it's just, it's nice, you know, he might not have walked away from this with a girlfriend, but he walked away with a new friend, and I think that's pretty dope, I know it seems, it's oh, super cheesy of me to say that, but it's pretty cool, you know? There's also the thing at the ending, because obviously, like, the U.S. government's kind of getting blamed, because obviously the cover-ups, there's, like, Bob's death, there's obviously everything with, you know, uh, Barb's death, and then there's, like, you know, uh, Hop. Um, just like everything that went down in Hawkins, obviously the mayor gets taken down for his part to play in everything. So it's a whole thing of like, yeah, no one will ever fully know the truth because obviously none of the parents still know anything. They're all still a little oblivious, but it's that thing of just like enough of the truth that's kind of there that it was, it answers a lot of stuff for a lot of people. But even to the point Hawkins is like, oh, like the sign says instead of welcome to Hawkins, Hawkins, it's written like welcome to hell. And it's like... Hawkins is now, like, on the map, which I am guess that could potentially be something in the future of, like, people coming to Hawkins as, like, a tourist trap to be like, oh, man, look at this place where all this terrible, 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 terrible things have happened over the course of these three seasons. So that could be something they do. Once again, it all comes down to, and that's a conversation that's come up before of, like, some people, once again, some people want the whole thing of, like, oh, I want to follow different characters every season. It's like you have this world and everything you haven't fully explored. You can have other characters. They, got, they don't want to follow the same group. 
I don't care. I, like, I prefer following the same group of characters. I'm not really big into the whole anthology. Like, once again, that'd be a, it'd be a different hybrid of anthology because you'd be in the same world. You'd just be following a set, a different set of stories and different characters. I, I'm attached to these characters. I'm literally, you know, once you get attached to characters, you don't want to ever let them go. I don't ever want to let these characters go. If this series is going to end, when it ends, it's going to be with these characters for me. I know not everyone's going to feel that way, but that's just how I feel. I get attached to any group of characters, you know, that come along the way, and it's just, like I said, I'm hoping, once again, for the ho whole hop situation, but like I said, my mind is betting that the American they're referencing is Brenner, but once again, we will see. Hell, I might be wrong on both accounts. It might be someone else completely different that we're not aware of, and maybe it's someone else I just wasn't even thinking of including in that, so... We'll see. Because obviously it seems like Hop might have got vaporized, but who's to say he wasn't buried under some stuff or something? Or, well, maybe he managed to get away, but before he could get away. Because, like, when the U.S. government shows up, like, they go through the place, like, all the... Everyone there, the base is completely empty. We never actually see them take down anyone because they had already escaped. So who's to say Hop didn't get away, but then before he, you know, maybe he was badly hurt because of the explosion. But who's to say he didn't get grabbed up at that point? So, um, like I said, that's where my mind is with that, so. And once again, it's something like the... It's so interesting because, like, the Upside Down plays such a big part, but we haven't actually stepped foot in the Upside Down. I mean, there were parts of last season where people stepped foot in it, and obviously, like, Will saw into it, and technically was there, but it was never a full-blown, like, season one where people were there. Like, with the exception of L being there after the events of season one. But still, you get what I'm trying to say. It's still so much about that world we still don't understand, like how it is and why it is the way it is. Once again, maybe it's just something we will never get an answer to. It's just like, a, this world is the way it is, shut up and accept it. Which, hey, I'm always fine with that, but I'm always interested to find out like if there's more to this. Is the Mind Flayer the biggest big bad that's there? Even though the brain was shut off and that creature was killed, I mean, here, which... What did they do with that? I guess the U.S. government swept in and disposed of the body, which is so interesting. You literally sweep in at the very end when everything's all said and done, but I guess it's like you helped cover up more stuff, so I guess there's that. But also, it's like... I don't know. Like, the Mind Flayer is still... Like, obviously, you you cut the close the portal, you cut off the brain, and the body dies, but, like, that thing is still alive on the other side anyway, right? So, I think that's still kind of the point. So, even, you know, so is there anything even more powerful than that? Or is that still the thing of, like, you still have to worry about it coming through in some shape or form? Potentially, even, if, especially if the Russians have, you know, opened their own portal to, you know, the Upside Down. So, once again, overall, like I said, great season. I cannot stress that enough. Like I said, I do believe, still now, that this might be my favorite season. Well, now, the big question is, when it's all said and done, will there be a season four of Stranger Things? Well, from what I'm reading online, everything is pretty much being like a, it's a pretty good bet that there will be, but obviously, with just a lot of the actors being busy and stuff like that, it'd probably be another while before we end up with... Um, of season four if there is one I was also reading something that was saying like the Duffer brothers were saying that basically the show would end after a fourth or fifth season so uh, that's something to kind of keep in mind too so like I said this is like me recording this literally it came out today season three so like I don't always expect an immediate like oh like it's already greenlit it's kind of like no but it's, I guess because Stranger Things is such a hit you know that on Netflix that it kind of was like uh, it's kind of potentially a guarantee but you know there are no guarantees but it just like I said everything seems like it's a probably yes so I'd be very interested like I said to see at where season 3 left us with like the group divided at like they are like not just like oh like they've been divided before and came back together which obviously they would but the whole thing is like now it'd be like obviously them being even older too would be another thing and just what the story would end up being, what challenges they were overcome. Because once again, it's something I brought up too. It's like each season will get bigger and bigger. It's like this is a really big season with just the scale of everything. So it's like, where do you go even beyond this? I'd be so excited to see what they do with a season four. Hell, even a season five if things play out and they go down that route for a fifth season potentially being the final, if not the fourth. Like either way, I'd be fine with it. So I, I just, I'd be so curious to see how just everything would play out going forward in whichever future this series might have, you know? But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time, me, be happy, be safe, love, light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.